Hey, what's up? Derek Kirk of Effectatron. And today, Maxon kind of dropped a bomb with the Maxon new one, the spring release 2025. Uh, not with features that are coming out with this update, sadly. There are some really cool features with this update, but more what they tease with it. And I'm just going to jump straight to the point. Liquid Sims are coming, and we're going to talk more about that here in a minute. But basically, they're adding a lot more um, spline tools. Basically, all of Rocket Lasso's spline tools are being brought in. Uh, the particle emitter tools and workflow are being improved inside of the viewport, as well as just the new things from the Rocket Lasso suite. And they say everything is available to all subscribers. Now, I'm assuming that that means Max on one subscribers because that's kind of the umbrella of this update, not just C4D subscribers, which by the way, C4D subscribers this year, whenever your thing renews, you don't have to pay for Redshift Extra anymore. Redshift GPU is included, which is fantastic. So if you want to learn Redshift and Cinema 4D, Mind Emotion bundle is on sale right now. I have two courses. I've got Fundamentals and I've got the Animate section. So the first one is like basically deep dive into everything you need to learn Redshift and C4D. And as far as creation goes, and then animate section is all about a bunch of videos about how to use all the MoGraph tools and motion strengths of C4D. And you can bundle and save right now. Everything's on sale, spring sale. Click link below. It's only $200 for a hundred something plus lessons and 50 hours of training. It's the most comprehensive and up-to-date course that is available. So definitely check that out below. Uh, okay, so liquids are coming. We'll talk about that. Uh, and then on top of that, Redshift has some improvements. We're going to talk about those really quick. Basically, as far as C4D users go, viewport baking is the big thing. You can finally make your viewport actually look like what your materials look like on there without having to do an IPR render on them. Which, yes, normally you have IPR on all the time, but it was just seemed like a feature that just should be added. When you throw something in the viewport, don't give me a weird misrepresentation of what that's going to look like. Finally, you can add texture baking and create it to look properly. Also, they've added open PBR support, which is going to allow people that people are, that work across multiple platforms and software is going to be very excited because it's going to allow your registry materials to look the same throughout. 3DS users and V-Ray users are able to get uh, just Corona and V-Ray straight converted into Redshift, which is fantastic. Why that's limited through DS Max right now, I don't know. That's obviously, they're they're pushing the ArcViz side of things. Hopefully that will come to C4D. And then besides that, they drop this real sweet little nugget about clouds and VDBs and how to easily, finally easily add displacement to your VDBs with the material node. Basically, you could do it before, but they've streamlined it and made it much easier where it's like basically plug a max on noise into displacement of your volume and it finally is going to actually just work. Uh, so that's great. And then on top of that, the last thing they've got is the... Cineware updates basically is just streamlined a little bit better and they added character animation and the ability to use rather than using data smith you can now use interchange uh so that's pretty good especially if you you know if you're in game dev you probably that probably means a lot more to you uh than if you're just doing things swapping things over to render or whatever but uh, very cool that you've got character animation things coming in there so yes let's take a deeper look into all these updates now and um yeah hit that like and subscribe if you like these kind of videos and, and like my channel and stuff supports me helps me out and definitely check out the Mind Emotion class down below. I feel like Maxon's kind of been eh, like this a little bit, um, but this, they're, they're teasing some things that might, you know? So let's take a look at what all they're doing. Okay, so first things first, they're making all the particles and everything and splines better. Basically, they're saying all these spline tools have been added. What that means is they've basically integrated Rocket Lasso's, all of his little plugins and stuff are just built into C4D now. Basically, it says to all subscribers, uh, so I'm hoping that means C4D subscribers and not max on one subscribers. I haven't tested yet, but these things were like kind of behind the paywall, but now they're hopefully available to everybody. But yeah, you're getting his deformer things and stuff. But uh, the main thing is like there's a lot of cool new tools, um, electricity, woven deformers, constellation deformers, stuff like that. So if you want to see like it's just a lot more spline tools that are kind of fun, uh, artistic things that I think um, Max on yeah, should have had, uh, which is a great addition. So I'm glad they're finally adding this kind of stuff because this is the stuff that, uh, that historically has made C4D great. It had things that were just like built in. They made it easy to use, easy to do, cool effects. Um, and so they're, they seem to be going back towards there. Um, so we'll see. But they've also increased, uh, they've just made particles even better even though i just dropped a huge uh section 
on particles and a big video on particles. Look at this. They've added particle control in the viewport and they've added the ability to control the emitter size and velocity and then how to use like vertex maps and stuff in this. Um, they just basically made the viewport better and easier to control for particles so you can do more stuff with it, which is really, really cool because it needed that. Like it was like, okay, it was kind of guessing what it's going to look like. And now you can kind of see a little bit more what it's going to look like. So real liquid sims, not faking particle sims, not faking cloth sims, turning them into liquids, putting things in the volume builder. Actual, true liquid simulators. Finally, my Maxon's been like, yeah, with features. And now I'm like, finally, are they kind of coming up? Did they, is this enough to really save themselves? Is this feature going to really be the liquid sim we want it to be? Okay, so here's kind of the thing. We'll talk about everything they add in here, but let's take a look at liquids because I know that's what you're really curious about. Cool lava flow. That looks fantastic. It's hard to tell from this shot whether these things are just purely texture-based or if those crusts are kind of like little particles that are set on top, kind of like a foam, where they're actually moving with it or is this just purely a texture driven thing? I wish they showed like a wireframe of the way this looks because if there's like the ability to push particles with the liquid and create foam and stuff like that, that'd be huge because they do not mention a flip solver at all. And they only showcase these kind of small form liquid demonstrations. They've got wine pouring in, which is fantastic. Um, they've got chocolate pouring on stuff. Very, very nice. So that's it though, right? That those are the, those are the sneak peeks we get of liquid. That's it. So <laughs> is it like, is it going to have surface tension features? Is it going to have buoyancy? Is it going to be able to have foam and be able to do like big oceans and waves and hit rocks and splash? Or is it going to be mainly like finite little small things that you can do with particles now um, where you kind of fake it, where you can just pour some lotion on some stuff or <laughs> on the on the skin, or put it in the basket. Uh, no, but basically you can you know, have chocolate drizzle on things, cover things. I think this is fantastic. I think that is uh, the fact that they're doing that kind of stuff and kind of getting away from leaning into having to do things like an X particle or Jenga effects, um, which those kind of, those, the strengths of those, well, as far as Jenga effects goes, were kind of more large scale things somewhat. Jenga effects is kind of, it, it's, it wasn't the solution that I think Maxon needed, uh, obviously for liquid. And I'm hoping that this is, but is it going to be as strong as like Blender's liquid sim? I don't know. It needs to be. Let's be honest. It needs to be as fast, if not faster. It needs to be able to have foam. And obviously it's going to come out slowly. They're going to drop it out. And then it's going to be like, oh, and more features to come, right? Because it's going to. But Will liquids be able to have like a red liquid and a blue liquid? Are they going to be able to hit, mix, and turn purple? Like, is, are these the things that Redshift and C40 are going to allow us to do? Uh, like, are we going to be able to do ink drops into water where we have one liquid that's kind of a different buoyant, like a different density type? And is it going to react like that? These are all questions that I'm very excited to answer. But from the demonstrations that they show, it looks an awful lot like just doing particles into a volume builder. So I'm curious on how good this liquid sim is going to be but yeah that's it they've added some ArcViz stuff and things like that on top of this some doors they've added new hdris which is nice um new materials very cool but it seems like most of this stuff is going to be behind, behind the max on one paywall always 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 whenever there's an update like this check the asset browser see what's new that's the best way to see like what did they really add what did they skip but yeah so that's kind of the big big news is that liquids are coming to C40. They're not here yet, but they are coming. Uh, but also another big cool thing that they've added is um, the basically they've added a ton of features from Rocket Lasso. Uh, they've added a bunch of things like his spline deformer tools, things like that, electricity, uh, the ability to make like splines all jiggly and wiggly like, 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 like that, and then like woven tools, things like that. So basically the Rocket Lasso suite of spline deformer kits is now built into C4D. They've made particles even better to control, which is fantastic. Uh, I just had a particle video come out just yesterday. Uh, it's like an hour or something long ago, diving into how cool the particle system is and having fun with it. And now we can dive into it even more and have even more fun. So very, very cool. Uh, yeah, and it just seems to be better and better optimized and stuff like that. So Will the particle system be able to work with the liquid system? And will Pyro be able to work with the liquid system? You know, like the, these are the questions I'm, I'm curious about. Like, um, 
it's pretty cool. Uh, I think that I think it has a lot of potential. The the issue always with me is like scale, right? Because I see these videos in Unreal Engine Five. This is we'll we'll cover what else is new in Redshift in just a second. Like I see these videos in Unreal Engine Five where it's like here's a fluid plugin and it's like the landscape that has all these crevices and stuff and they just hit play and their character's running around live interacting with the water. The water's like flowing down the curves. It's filling up. It's hitting things. It's splashing. And I'm like, okay, is this the kind of liquid sim that we're going to get? It doesn't feel like it, but who knows? It feels like we're going to get more of like a Jenga effect style liquid sim where it's going to handle smaller scale things much better than large scale things. But who knows? Who knows? We'll see. All right, let's take a look at Redshift. So not only did C4D update, Redshift has some cool tools. A lot of the features in this are kind of more about uh, 3ds Max being able to use V-Ray and Corona and just instantly convert it. Hopefully that will come over to C4D because why the heck wouldn't it? Uh, and then, uh, but then they drop some bombs here. There's one that's really cool that uh, I think is going to make a lot of people that work in multi-platform pipelines. Uh, a lot happier, and that is the support of open PBR materials, which basically means your materials will be able to stay consistent and use this new industry standard of open PBR type materials. It's going to say, okay, when I open it up in Redshift, it should look the exact same as I open it up in Maya. It should look the same in 3ds Max and Houdini. They should all look the same, and they won't be these little variances and differences based on the program anymore. Uh, so that's fantastic. But they drop these two huge bombs so quickly. Two things that I'm excited about with Redshift, like. Uber, uber quickly, okay. Viewport bake mode. Redshift has finally made it so you can make the freaking viewport look like your materials. I don't know why this took so long, but you can finally do material baking into your viewport. It's like, so you can do viewport renders for clients. I'm like, yeah, good. Finally, also so that you can actually work in a viewport that reflects what it's going to look like. Like, why is that not a standard thing? So yes, you have to come in here to manually material translation inside the preferences and switch it to baking and i can't tell you how much it hurts to see that this is all on a mac oh this redshift tutorial with c40 is on a mac Whoa, it's like it's like rendering with the hand tied behind your back i don't understand anyway <laughs> just kidding look it, you do you do you mac people it hurts they've even got the cpu blended with this where it's just it's gonna be slow i don't know anyway <laughs> At least they have hybrid rendering off, so they, they, I don't know. Okay, but yeah, besides that, let's, like, seriously, the viewport, finally, 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 you know how annoying it was to be, like, trying to scale a noise and, or a texture on an object and then having to do it all within this? And, like, here's the crazy thing. They've got the node editor down here built in in this mode that I haven't ever really seen it used like this. I don't know what... It's a wood procedural material starts with a seed, goes in and comes out diffused. Like there's no surface here. I don't really know what's going on down here. Uh, maybe someone else can fill me in on that. But yeah, this is uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm hoping that this means finally when you add a material on, you switch it to baking, you'll see it reflect on your actual thing, uh, which is great. All right. So the second thing, that's the first bomb that they dropped finally. Uh, all the stuff they've added. they've improved clouds and then real quickly they say right here they say okay blah 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 They're like yeah okay and then boom right here this is a the second thing that they add to redshift is fantastic because they had a way uh to displace clouds even extra with material shader but you had to kind of jump through a bunch of hoops and it wasn't super simple and so they sneak this in it's about like three seconds of the video but basically, they finally made it so you can add displacement to your clouds with just a max on noise, a vector change range, and a vector multiply. And that can plug into the displacement of your standard volume. So you can finally treat clouds like everything else in C4D when it comes to materials and displacement, which is fantastic. So you can finally have like a VDB that looks pretty good and then literally pump it up just a little bit more. And you can see this isn't like a pyro sim. This is a VDB. So that is fantastic news. You can finally elevate your displacement and stuff like that. That's huge. The open PBR and the better clouds and fog. So your redshift texture viewport baking. So we can finally see what things look like in the viewport without having IPR on all the time. 
Lastly, we'll talk about Cineware really quickly. Basically, the way Cineware used to work with the kind of live link in the Unreal Engine 5 is you basically had Datasmith and you had to say, okay, do the live link, send it to Datasmith, send it over. And there were limitations and stuff with what you could send to Unreal Engine 5. And it just like kind of took a little extra time and stuff. But it was cool uh, that you could do that for sure. And it just looks like they basically streamlined that and made it a little bit better. You can see here in that little preview. You can see here that they actually have like the Maxon logo here. There's now, uh, you can use the Datasmith version, which is what they did before. But now they have the new Interchange version, which is apparently the industry standard for this. Uh, so hopefully this means that everything will just, it says it takes fewer steps and things. So hopefully like materials and things will come in better and everything for Redshift. I haven't tested it for myself yet, but I'm very interested in, interested in this because I really like Unreal Engine 5. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It seems to be just, oh, well, they also added character animation support and things like that. We can bring that in and it'll just translate into the Unreal Engine 5 uh, character rig, which is super cool, uh, especially for game dev and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. It just kind of helps the working together with Unreal Engine 5.